Right, so I have mixed the two foundations we spoke about earlier. And then now I'm going to start the foundation application. I went in with the, the tip of my other brush, it was very clean by the way. And I just used that to mix the foundation in. And then I'm going to apply, if you just face it up this way, yeah. And I'm just going to apply over her skin. As you can see from the first look, it definitely matches her skin perfectly. Sorry if I put that down to your mouth. There we are. And obviously, um, before I commence, I would also hydrate her lips, which should have been part of my skin prep. I do apologize. Um, and then just put a little bit of Carmex over her lips, just making sure that, um, and in this corona times, you don't want to be dipping with your brush in there. You want to scoop it out and put it behind your, at the back of your hands and just apply on her lips. And this keeps the lips really hydrated and supple so that when you're applying your lipstick or whatever, or lip gloss, it literally stays on the skin and it looks, the, the lips, the lip application looks seamless and spotless. So now we're going to blend this in first of all. And as you can see, as I'm blending it away, I'm using a flat top brush. And this is from Morphe, it's Morphe M6 brush. And I am just buffing that into the skin. Don't be afraid to be in control if you're applying makeup on someone. Don't be, don't be afraid to, you know, move or maneuver their head so far that you're doing it safely and you're not tugging or pulling your head um, from left to right. And then make sure that you are buffing it into the skin, not swiping, not dragging like that, just light buff into the skin as you can see you don't necessarily have to use a lot of foundation as well because the foundation i used is quite good and it's um uh some people will say it's a medium coverage some people will say it's a full coverage in my opinion on clear skin it could be a full it is a full coverage but if you have like a blemish skin it's something that you might want to build up so as you can see the side of face i've applied foundation and on the other side of face there isn't any foundation on the skin so can you just give them a little back and forth and no foundation so i'm going to do the other side and i'm just going to apply foundation now just make sure that you are buffing it into the skin not dragging like this no don't do that you want to buff it in sometimes you might have to tell your client can you fold your mouth in and then you'll be able to get in the corners of the mouth under the chin the sides of the nose as well those hard to reach corners just tell them to fold your mouth in and you've got yourself a nice blended even um coverage now i'm just going to do the forehead and obviously you can use little foundation at a time don't go over the face and apply a lot of foundation and then say you want to come back and blend it out you want to apply it a, um, a section at a time so that that way you're not left with so much product on your face so much product on your brush and it doesn't seem like it's blending out well so as you can see the foundation alone on adult skin has given her that radiant glow and don't forget our skin prep one thing about me is that i don't generally like to use a lot of foundation under the eyes at this point i always leave it for my um concealers and if your client is wearing a scarf or something don't be afraid to push it back a little just to get into those airlines because at the end of the day you don't want to have that demarcation of a scarf and you know the skin so now that there's a the foundation has been applied on adele's face i'm going to bring whatever is left on my brush and i'm going to put that just right underneath her chin if at this point if she had like discoloration or hyperpigmentation where her neck is dark and her face was light or something i would then apply more foundation towards the neck and blend it out but in this case Adele does not have that, so I'm just going to skip that step. So to get that extra dew, if you're going for a glowy look, 
I like to use, sometimes I'll go in with a glow mist, but not all the time I like to go in with a glow mist. It depends on what you want to achieve. You can use a glow mist or sometimes I'll go back in again and use the setting spray. Now this setting spray I've got, I've got this one from So Pro Hydra Glow Mist, which is really, really, really good. Um, it's a Nigerian brand, so if you're in Nigeria, make sure you get your hands on this. It's very, very affordable compared to this one I, I use from Urban Decay. This one from Urban Decay is um, Ultra Glow as well. And it's got a little bit of a, you know, glow in it as well, which I really like, but still keeping the makeup mattified and long lasting throughout the day. So I'm just going to quickly spray Adele's face quickly. Can you close your eyes? Now, if you've got an oily skin, this is the part where you would want to go back in again. Um, can you hold this for me? Okay. Thank you. This is the part whereby um, if you have an oily skin, if you have a blemished skin, if you have an acne skin or if the foundation you're using is a medium coverage foundation, to go in for a more fuller coverage, after you spray the face down, you then want to go in with a little bit more foundation. Um, for Adele, this is not necessary, but just for demonstration purposes, I will literally show you this as well. You can then go in and apply more foundation. So this is basically a second layer of foundation after you spray the face down down and for this i would not apply it under to under her eye area but just to the areas of her face like her cheeks and the mouth area as well as the forehead this is a step that you do if you want a fuller coverage foundation and it doesn't seem like you're using a lot or you know dragging on your skin but still making giving you that full coverage look can you hold them up for me please thank you now once that is into the skin i'm then gonna go in with a beauty blender now when it comes to beauty blender there's a lot of beauty blenders on the market and it's a misconception that some people still don't know what a soft beauty blender is some people you say, oh yes, my beauty blender is so soft, or oh, I have a soft beauty blender, but I don't know why it's not working for me, or I think that it's taking so much foundation. What's going on? That's because your beauty blender is not soft. I remember one time I met one of my students, and she came to train with me, and I was like, oh, let me see your beauty blender. She's like, yeah, my beauty blender is soft. The moment I held it, it felt like a rock. I could literally throw it at the wall, and it literally bounced back. It was so hard. So I've got like two beauty blenders I've been loving in the last seven, eight months, which I've repurchased and I really like, which is the Glam by Gladys um, beauty blenders, which you can, find, you can find her on Instagram and also Rem School Creations. She is UK based. I know in Nigeria, Nuban Beauty and Beauty Line by Didi and um, a few others also have good beauty blenders. But in this part of the world, these are the two that I know, I use, I trust, and I would buy and buy and buy over again. So before you use your beauty blender, obviously make sure that it is damp, not wet, not dry, but damp. If you're unsure of how to test for your, um, how damp your beauty blender is, when you suck it into the water and it expands and you squeeze the water out of it, just going with a really good high quality tissue or a high quality um, kitchen roll and squeeze it again. That way it would suck out all the water from your beauty blender and then it becomes damp. So now this is my beauty blender and this one I'm using is from Remsco Creations. And I'm just going to use that to just dab that into the skin. And what this is doing is taking off the excess, any excess makeup that hasn't soaked into Adele's skin. And it just takes that off um, onto the beauty blender. So now this is done, you can see that our base is starting to come alive. Now this is my canvas of which I'm going to be working on just foundation now it's time to add dimensions back into the face this is what you call or what some people call highlighting and contouring low lighting and highlighting um which is basically highlighting and contouring like i said earlier um it's basically adding warmth is adding areas that you want the light to attract to your face is adding shades or shadows onto your face as well um that's what contouring does shadows um highlighting is areas that the light would draw in um highlighting um highlighting the cheekbones is where you want to glow slash illuminate 
of which we'll talk about during this step. So now, as you can see, this is the canvas I'm working with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by highlighting Adele's face. 